Good morning, Seven Cities Church family. It's Pastor Jay, and I am here with Dan and Heather Everett. Hi. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> and they have been working on the Comfort and Joy Coat Drive, along with a planning team that we put together for this event. And that coat drive is happening at the Taylor Bend YMCA today as you guys are watching this. Unless you're watching it later in the day, it's already happened. But hopefully you were there and you received the coat as well. But I just wanted to take a moment personally to say thank you, but also to give Dan and Heather an opportunity to answer a couple of questions for us and tell us a little bit more about the event and then just to share some of their thoughts. So to start off, can you guys tell me why did we do this event? Pastor Jay, we just uh, really want to have the opportunity to bless our neighbors, to live out our values of reaching people and community and generosity. And through the Comfort and Joy event, we as a church body have been able to bless over 200 kids with new coats this year. And we're just so grateful and thankful for that. So that's awesome. So we wanted to live out those values like generosity, but this wasn't just about giving kids coats, was it? Like there was more to this, right? So uh, it's, it's a lot more. I mean, it's really just about reaching out to people, sharing the love of Christ and ensuring that everybody knows that, hey, look, you belong here. You are our brother. You are our sister. And we want you to be with us. We want you to be here. Yeah. And so if you received a coat through the Comfort and Joy Coat Drive, I want you to know that each of these coats has been prayed over. Like this wasn't just about giving you a coat, although that's a great thing. We want you to get to know the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we felt that a great way to do that was to provide for a need, but also to just be family with you, to be here with you in this season and in this moment. So again, for me and from the Everett's, I want to say thank you so much. If you received a coat, thank you uh, for being willing to come out and get a coat. If you gave coats, Thank you so much for giving coats and just being a blessing to the community because uh, we can never do any of this stuff without you. So again, thank you for me. Thank you for the Everett's, right? Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for tuning in and watching this day. I mean, you can keep on watching the service after this or, you know, you can just go check out any of our other messages, anything like that. But we would love actually to meet you in person. So next week, if you're watching this on the 10th next week, come and join us at the theater in Harborview. We would love to have you there. And if you're watching this after the 7th or after the 10th, you can come join us any Sunday, 10 a.m., the theater in Harborview. We would love to have you. We'll save a seat for you. Uh, but for now, again, just thank you. Hey, what's up, everybody? Pastor Brian here. I hope that you're having a great weekend and are having a great morning so far. If you know what's happening in the life of our church, you know that we are not meeting in the theater, which is why you are watching this right now. We are actively uh, loving on our city and our community through our Christmas coat drive. And so because of your generosity, your faithfulness, your commitment and dedication to our vision and our values here, we were able to give uh, and are currently about to, literally, as you're watching this, give 200 plus coats out to families who are in need. And so we are so excited and thankful for that opportunity. But we did want to have an opportunity for those who couldn't make it out uh, to participate in, uh, in church today in an online fashion. And so we are pulling a message from 2021 that I preached from a series called Love Your City today. And we're about to play that. I wanted to kind of set this up and let you know what you're about to see and uh, it's interesting number one to see how far we've come along uh, with our recording I remember the first year recording in, in Pastor Jay's living room and uh, and this one took place right there but uh, the content in this message the principles the points the passages that we cover really fit with what we're doing uh, right now with our coat drive and what we want to do moving forward as we continue to love our city. We're not just a church that wants to sit inside uh, of four walls. We want to be active. We want to be engaged. We want to love 
on the people around us. And so I hope that you enjoy this message. Join us next week back in the theater as we continue our Christmas series called The Signs of Christmas. And we look forward to a great holiday season. I hope you have a great day. I love you guys. Enjoy the message. We are finishing the series Uh, Love your city in your city. And so at the end of this message, I'm going to share an incredible opportunity that we have as the body of Christ, as a church, as a local body, to be able to go love on our city. And I can't wait. So if you don't want to listen to this, make sure you come back to the end and hear about that. But, uh, But I think you should stay because... I believe God wants to speak to us today. And so if you've missed the first two, go back to YouTube, go to our website, whatever you need to do and watch those two. Not right now, uh, but I would love for you to catch up and, uh, and just hear how uh, I believe that God teaches us and there are more ways as well that we can love our cities in our neighborhoods, our workplaces, and now here we go in our city. And so our theme passage, I hope that you have it memorized by now. It comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. It says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under the stand, but instead sets it out for everyone to see. In the same way, let your good deeds shine before others so that they may worship our heavenly father. And so we are the light of the world as the church, as believers. We get to shine a light into dark places. All right. So you guys ready? Here we go. We're going to jump right in. Pull your pens out, pull your Bibles out, pull your notepads out, whatever you need to do to take notes. We're going to dive right in. And I'm going to just go ahead and give you a heads up as most weeks, but this one might be a little bit uh, a little bit on another level. I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. So buckle up, put your seatbelt on, hang on tight because we're about to take off. All right. You ready? Say ready. Come on. Comment ready. Look at your neighbor. Say, wake up. Let's do this. We're about to find out how to love on our cities. All right. Here we go. The first thing I want you to write down is this. Our cities are full of people who matter to God. Our cities are full of people who matter to God. Now, some of you are like, all right, that is one of the dumbest points that I've ever heard, or it's so simple. Listen, check this out. In the Hampton Roads area, there are approximately 1.6 million people. So the seven cities, all right, give or take or few. And I want to tell you a little secret, all right? I want to tell you something that will probably blow your mind, all right? Of those 1.6 million people, check this out. Are you ready? Every single one of them matters to God. Every single one of them, all 1.6 million people. Like that is a lot of people. If I called you up today and I said, bro, I just got an, inher- an inheritance and I want to give you $1.6 million. What would you, what would you do? Right? You'd be like, let's go bring it on. That's a lot of money. That's game changing. That's life changing. Like I want every dollar that you want to give me 1.6 million people. Guess what? That's a lot of souls and all of those souls. There is no price tag for their salvation. It's eternal. And I'm telling you, every single one of them matter to God. Now, I know some of you are like, all right, duh, I get it. I already know that. That's so simple. And listen, I don't know that you and I would ever fully get to a place. Maybe you do. If you are, I really pray that you would search your heart. But I don't know that we would get to a place to where we would literally, like physically, audibly say that there are people that don't matter to God. I pray that you don't say that. And, and, and I don't believe that. I don't believe that there are people that don't matter to God. But oftentimes I find that my actions, and I'm not you, so I can't necessarily say what you do, but I would almost say even your actions at times, although you don't believe, although you don't say that people don't matter to God, your actions tend to lean towards that. Where you act as if people don't matter to where we write people off. And as I was thinking about A person in the Bible who did this, I went to the Old Testament classic, and so we are going to be in the book of Jonah, in the book of Jonah, all right? If you never read the story of Jonah, I know that you've heard it. He gets swallowed by a fish. Listen, I have never preached or taught from the book of Jonah 
and not talked about Jonah getting swallowed by a fish, but I'm about to do it today. All right? At least I think I am. It's not in my notes. It may come up if the Holy Spirit says go for it, but it is not in my notes. I can't believe I'm about to do it, but we're about to do it. All right? Jonah, turn to Jonah, chapter 1. We're going to look at the first three verses. All right? Remember this. Our cities are full of people. And those people matter to God. Here we go. Chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. It says, The Lord gave this message to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and he went into the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and he went on board hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. Listen, Jonah ran. He ran far away from this city. And you and I, we may not be jumping on a ship or an airplane or some other means of jumping and moving and getting out of the city, but oftentimes we are running away from the people that are in our city that matter to God. We, we are running away from conversations that we know we can have and should have to show people how much God loves them. We are running away from organizations who are set up and established and are sharing the gospel and sharing the love of Jesus all throughout our cities and are providing opportunities for us to join along and love our cities. We are running away from all of these different things. Why? Because I believe we write people off. Again, we don't say that they don't matter to God, but that's the thing things that we believe. The, the reason that Jonah ran away from this city is because he knew that if he went into this city and shined the light that God was calling him to shine, that God was going to show mercy on these people, forgive them and love on them in a way that only God could. And yet we have this mentality sometimes if we're really raw and transparent. I used to hear my, I used to say this to my kids, but one of my kids learned this at school and they always said it. You get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. And I started thinking about that as I was preparing for this. And that is the mentality that we have with people. We see people who are living far away from God. We see people whose lifestyles are rebellious and wicked and corrupt. And the mentality that we have is they don't matter and God doesn't care about them. And if they keep living the way that they are, they're going to get the punishment that they deserve. Can I just tell you something? I praise God every day that I don't get the punishment that I deserve. I matter to God and they matter to God. And we've got to stop running away from the people that God has placed in our city for us to love on. It, it, we've already talked about this. The sovereignty of God has placed you in the neighborhood that you are in. The sovereignty of God has placed you in the workplace that you are in. And the sovereignty of God has placed you in the city that you are in. And so often we see people who we have written off in our head and instead of running to them, we run away from them. And that's the question that I want to ask you. Like, I'm not trying to create some idealistic lifestyle that you and I can't live up to or we can't measure out to where we are involved in every single aspect and every you know, organization and every nonprofit and we're doing this and doing that. Like, I'm not saying that, that we have to live in some fairy tale land. But what I'm proposing to you is that when you see people in your city who you know, who you know are living in darkness and you can go and shine a light into their life by whatever means necessary, are you running to them or are you running away from them? I love the very last verse of Jonah, Jonah chapter four, verse 11. God is speaking to Jonah and he says this, Nineveh has 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? This is the Lord speaking. And you know what the Lord is saying to Jonah? Those people in Nineveh that I'm trying to send you to, they matter to me. They matter to me. And I wonder if we would just open our eyes and we would go back to what we talked about in week one in regards to people in our neighborhoods by, by being compassionate. 
I wonder if we would allow compassion to well up inside of us to where we see people that are living a lifestyle where we could easily say those people don't matter to God because they don't care about God. But we would say, oh my gosh, those people are living in spiritual darkness and I have a light and I have an opportunity and a God has placed me in a city and I'm going to go love on them in my city and I'm going to shine a light and lead them to a place where they can have life and hope and joy and peace. Like these people matter to God and you, my friend, you are the light of the world. You are like a city on a hill. It cannot be hidden. Our cities are full of people and those people matter to God. Let's, let's just lay the foundation from the get-go. Because I believe that if we would shift our perspective to that, we would start to see people differently. We would start to see people the way that God sees people. We would start to see situations the way that God sees situations. We would, instead of getting defensive, we would be able to fill it with grace. Instead of running away, we would be able to run too. People matter to God, and therefore, they should matter to us. Our cities are full of people, and those people matter to God. Amen? You with me? Come on. All right, here we go. Point number two. We're rocking and rolling wide open. Put your belt, if it's unbuckled, buckle it back up. All right? Our cities are full of problems, but we have the solution. Our cities are full of problems, but we have the solution. Like literally, I want you to just pause for a second, whatever you're doing, take one big deep breath and let that sink in for a minute. Our cities are full of problems, and you and I, church, we have the solution. We are the light of the world like a city on a hill. It can not be hidden. We have the solution. And as I think about this story of Jonah and the, the reason that he ran away or, you know, I'm like, why did he go to Nineveh? Why wouldn't he go to this place? And, and, and there's obviously a big reason because he didn't want God to show mercy on him. He wanted what we just talked about. He's like, hey, y'all want to live that way? You're going to get what you deserve. But I, th- I started thinking about like, well, what were the things that were going on in Nineveh? And we don't see a lot of that in the book of Jonah. It doesn't say a lot about this city. However, there is a book in the Bible, two books over from Jonah in the book of Nahum, or Nahum, however you want to pronounce it, that tells us a good bit about the city of Nineveh. All right, here we go. I'm going to just share a few of them with you. Chapter one of the book of Nahum, verse nine, it says, why are you scheming against the Lord? This is talking about the city of Nineveh. They were literally as a city plotting against God. Then if you jump down to verse 14, the latter part of it, it says, I will destroy all the idols in the temples of your gods. Again, talking about the city of Nineveh. They had false gods. They were worshiping things that were not God. If you jump over to chapter two, verse 12, it says, the lion tore up meat for his cubs and strangled prey for his mate. He filled his den with prey, his caverns with his plunder. Okay, that one's a little bit challenging to understand. Let me break it down with you. The word lion there was this this, this symbolic aspect of people in power. And what was happening in the city of Nineveh, that people of power, people with money, people of high ranking, they were exploiting the weak. They were taking money and taking things from the people there who that they could they could basically store up things for themselves. Like this was a wicked city. Chapter three, verse one, what sorrow awaits Nineveh, the city of murder and lies. This city was full of liars. This city was full of murderers. Jump over to verse four, chapter three, all this because Nineveh, this beautiful and faithless city, mistress of deadly charms, enticed the nations with her beauty. She taught them all of her magic, enchanting people everywhere. Three things in there. This city, it was faithless. This city was filled with prostitution. This city was filled with witchcraft. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear some of that stuff, it doesn't really surprise me because some of the same things that were taking place in the city of Nineveh are taking place all around us. 
There is a city who is living for the world and not for the word or for God. And you gonna tell you something? God cared about those people. And guess what? God cares about our people in our cities who are doing the exact same thing that was taking place in the city of Nineveh. And he cared so much about these people. And he cares so much about our people, these people that mattered to God, that he sent a man named Jonah who saw all the problems that were taking place in Nineveh. But he knew that as he took the gospel message and spoke the words of the Lord, that he had the solution. And you and I had the solution as well. Our cities, they're corrupt. Our cities are are jacked up, like literally. There are some terrible things and our cities are filled with lots of problems. But you and I, we have the solution. We have the solution. I want you to just think for a moment, and I'm not trying to oversimplify things, but you want to tell you, let me tell you something. You know what the solution to the problem that we have in our cities with prostitution? It's Jesus. You want me to tell you the solution to the problem that we have with homelessness? It's Jesus. You want me to tell you the solution to the problem that we have in our cities with drug addiction? It's Jesus. You want me to tell you the solution to the problem of kids running around who are not living in homes with their mother and their father? And the solution is Jesus. I could go on and on and on. The solution is Jesus. And our cities are filled with problems. And you and I, we are the light of the world like a city on a hill that cannot be hidden and we can go into our cities. We can shine a light and we can share the solution to all the problems that are taking place in our cities. Our cities are full of problems. And you and I, we have the solution. The first thing we have to understand is the people that are doing and causing all of these problems, guess what? They matter to God. They matter to God. And when we let that sink in, then we have the perspective to say, you know what? I'm not going to shut them off. I'm not going to run away from them. But I see that there's a problem. And me as a believer, me as someone who has the light of the world inside of me, I'm going to go and offer a solution. And I know it's not that simple. Listen, I'm not trying to oversimplify things. The solution is simple. Like, it's Jesus. Every, if you have a problem, the answer is Jesus. It's always Jesus and it always will be Jesus, period. How we get there, that's the challenging part, right? That's where it takes us, being filled with grace and love and joy and peace and all the fruits of the Spirit. Like, there's a reason that that's in the Word. Like, we get to go and live as a light, And let God do what only God can do, okay? We are not the solution. We carry the solution. And Jesus shines through us. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hill. Our cities are full of people, and those people, they matter to God. Our cities are full of problems, and we have the solution. And last but not least, here we go. Short and sweet, right? This one's going to be a little bit longer, so hang on. (laughs) Here we go. Our cities are full of opportunities for revival to break out. Our cities are full of opportunities for revival to break out. Jonah, chapter 3. Let me get back to where I was here. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. All right, so just to give you a quick little context, Jonah ran away. We we read that in the first chapter. Uh, three verses, and then now the Lord is speaking to Jonah again for the second time. All right, chapter three, one through 10. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up, go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message that I have given you. This time, Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and he went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message. And from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and they put on burlap to show their sorrow. Don't miss this. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne. He took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and he sat on a heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning and everyone must pray 
pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all of their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even, yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us all. When God saw what they had done and how he had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. Did you get that? A whole city just repented and turned away from the way that they were living to the way that they were going to live from God. I don't know about you, but I call that revival. And it happened because one man was obedient and he said, I'm going to go love my city. I'm going to be obedient to to what you've called me to do. I'm going to step into this city. There's people there that I don't like. There's people there that I don't want to love. There's people there that honestly don't matter to me, but I'm going to be obedient. And God did what only God could do. And a whole city was set on fire for Jesus. Like, come on. We have this opportunity right here in the seven cities. Like, don't say I can't do it alone because one man just did it alone. We can We are the light of the world and we have the solution to problems and we have got to step into the city that God has sent us to and instead of running away from it. I'm telling you, if we would do that, I promise you, I believe wholeheartedly from God's word that we would see revival. We would see a move of God. And I hear people all the time, oh oh, man, I, I just want revival. We need to have revival. We, the church needs to have revival. We, it starts right in your own heart. It starts with you. Everybody wants to see the fruit of it, but they don't want to do the work. And you got to repent and you got to be obedient and you got to be in the will of God before you actually get to step into the opportunities that God is sitting before you and setting before you to step into so that revival can break out. Like I believe wholeheartedly that God has started A good work in Seven Cities Church through you, through I, and through everybody that's a part because he wants to do something far greater than ourselves. Church, are you ready? Are are, are you willing to search your own heart and to repent before we go ask other people to repent? Have we repented? Are there things in our hearts that we've got to get rid of? Are we running away from God? Because if you are, that's disobedience. And you need to repent of that and turn the other direction. Like, I don't know what it takes. Maybe this is your sign. All right. Like, here we go. I said I wasn't going to get through this without the fish. But like God sent a sign to Jonah, a big one. He said, no, no, no. You're not going to run away from me. I'm going to reel you right back in. You're going to go to the belly of a fish and I'm going to spit you back out. This time you better listen. Maybe this is your sign. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe you listening to this message on a Sunday morning, April 25th, sitting in your living room or wherever you are, you didn't even want to come to church. You didn't think about turning it on, but for whatever reason you did. And here I am speaking to you. God is speaking through me to you. Here's your sign. I quit waiting on a sign. Let's step up and be obedient and let's love our cities like God loves our cities. Because I believe wholeheartedly when we start doing that, When we start understanding and looking through the lens that there are people in our cities, every single one of them, that matter to God. And that as a believer, all the problems, the brokenness, the darkness, the hopelessness, all the things that we see around us, we have the solution to. When we have those two right, we will begin to see opportunities. And we step into those opportunities and life change begins to take place. Again, guys, I'm not trying to create some false, idealistic, fairy tale life, okay? But I, I, I don't believe that we serve a God who does not still perform things like this. He's just waiting and asking and wondering if he has people like you and I who will step up and step into all that he has. There are opportunities and revival will break out. And I believe that as we love our cities, that there are so many different ways for us to do this. I believe sometimes loving your city in your city means just showing up and having a conversation. I believe sometimes it's, it's partnering with an organization who's making a difference in our city and we go and, and we serve. 
I believe sometimes it's, it's being a voice in our school system. I believe sometimes it's, it's, you know, going and picking up trash on the side of the road. It's meeting needs. Like, there are so many things. I believe sometimes it's like Jonah. You want to know why Jonah was so reluctant? Think about what God called him to do. He had to go into a city and say, hey, y'all better get your act together or the Lord's about to take y'all out. Like, nobody wants to do that. But I believe sometimes that's what God is calling us to do, to share the truth in love. And so there are so many avenues. There are so many aspects. There are so many ways that you and I can love our city. The question is, will you step into those opportunities, believing that God wants to start something? He wants to revive something. He wants to make things new. That's my heart for our city and our cities is that God would start something new. That that people would be brought from death to life, from darkness to light, from hopeless to hope. Like the restoration, the redeeming process that Jesus and only Jesus can do. That is my prayer for our cities because I know wholeheartedly that every person, whether they're running far away from Jesus and living a lifestyle far away from Jesus, that the Lord loves them and they matter to him and they, he wants them to come to salvation. And he gets to use you and I to be a part of that process. Let's not run away from the people in our cities. Let's run to them, knowing, not arrogantly, not pridefully, but filled with the Holy Spirit to say, I have the answer. I have the answer. The way that you've been feeling, the things that you've been doing, listen, there's a man named Jesus, and he died on a cross for you, and he loves you, and he bridged a gap you would never be able to cross on your own. And there's a void in your life that only he can fill. And there's a joy and a peace and a love and a grace and a peace of forgiveness and the abounding, abundant love that only he can offer. And I want to be the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden, not lighting it and putting it under a stand, but sitting it on top and loving our city so that everybody I come in contact with, everybody that I see, can see the light and the love of Jesus shining through me. That is what we are called to do, church. Let's step up and let's do it. Amen? Amen. Hey, listen, I have a very exciting and important announcement for you as we have organized and created an opportunity for us as a church body as a whole, to go out and serve our cities. Now, we are kind of sporadically in different places. Obviously, uh, Project North Suffolk is taking place, and so that's kind of where we want to kind of have our home base for now in North Suffolk, but in the same breath, we want to go ahead and start making an impact and a presence in other cities. And so we have partnered with an organization called Mercy Drops, which is located in Portsmouth. And we are going to have a basically all day long, not quite all day, uh, but a full day of serving with them on May the 15th. And so it's going to be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're not going to be working the entire time, but from 9 to 11, we're going to be uh, working on the street that Mercy Drops actually is, is, uh, is stationed out of, their Dream Center. So we're going to be picking up trash, cleaning up the street, serving the people who live on that street, and just being a light all up and down that street. We're going to do that from 9 to 11 We're going to have lunch together after that. Just have a good time of fellowship with each other uh, until 1 o'clock. And then from 1 to 3, we're going to be headed down to a block or a little area of a neighborhood in Portsmouth. Mercy Drops does a thing called Adopt a Block. And uh, they're going to model that for us so that we can look at uh, basically carrying that out later as we plant and start making a difference in the seven cities, but we're going to go down into this neighborhood, serve food, love on the people. They're going to have some community giveaways, uh, some fun for the kids. It's just going to be an incredible day of just serving and loving our city. And so you can find more information about that, sevencitieschurchva.com slash events. You don't have to register. All you got to do is just show up, um, 
But be looking on the website, be looking on social for more details. If you have a Seven Cities Church, uh, Seven Cities Church shirt is what I was trying to say. We would love for you to wear that. If you don't have one, you want one, let us know. Uh, we have some of those left to sell to you. And so um, we would love for everybody to just be rocking a shirt. If not, no worries. You don't have to wear one, but we would love to represent Seven Cities Church as we are out there shining a light. And so, man, we are super, super excited about that. We are excited about having an opportunity to serve together as a church. Many more to come. If you've missed it, make sure you look at our Go Teams as well. We have other opportunities to serve and love on our city, in our city. You can look uh, on our website, sevencitieschurchva.com slash go teams for those. We just added some new ones and uh, man, we are excited about all of those. And so listen, I hope that you have enjoyed this series. I hope that it's challenged you. I hope that it's encouraged you. And honestly, I hope that it's convicted you uh, because it has me in many ways. I, I constantly remind myself and just being transparent uh, to practice what I preach, right? Like, I don't want to just get up here and preach a good message and, uh, and go back home and not do anything about it. And so I just want you to know as your pastor uh, that I am not perfect, but I am daily striving to live out the things that I am teaching you um, because I believe that's what God wants us to. That's why I'm teaching it, right? And so um, I believe we have, an, we have an opportunity. We really do. Um, not just as a church, but as individual believers to make a difference in our city. There are a lot of people in our city who will never step foot in a church. They've been hurt by church. They don't like church for whatever reason. Everybody has their reasons slash excuses. But we have an opportunity to not just wait on them to come to us, but to take the light to them, to let them experience the love of Jesus through us and so, man, let's buckle up. Let's take off. Let's do this. Don't let this just be a series three weeks long and it's done. Let's live it out in our lives. All right, I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to close. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for loving us. I pray right now that you would help us to be the light that you've called us to be, that you would help us to love our cities and our neighborhoods and our workplaces and out in our cities with people that we don't even know. God, I pray that you would just remind us that every single person in this city in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods. They matter. They matter to you. And all the problems that we see, you are the answer. You are the solution. And I believe wholeheartedly, God, help us all to believe that when we step into those opportunities, we will see you move in supernatural, God-ordained ways, God. Lord, we are so thankful that you've equipped us and empowered us to be a light. And so, God, I pray for someone right now who's listening who's never received that light, who's never received the truth of the gospel, who heard it today and realizes, man, I can't go carry a light because I don't have a light. I pray that they would receive that today to acknowledge that they are a sinner in need of a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus Christ. He died on a cross for our sins, paid the price that we could not pay, raised from the grave three days later, and ascended to, the, to heaven with our, with our Father, and will be coming back again, and that they surrender their life right now in this moment to live for you. Father, we thank you for who you are to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.